there, Julian from MemberStack here, and today I want to talk about Webflow hosting and if you actually need it, depending on the kind of site that you're trying to build. So what I mean by that is when a lot of people start using Webflow, including myself, they see that there's a feature that you can actually export your own code, which sounds really cool. You can bring the site that you built in Webflow into another CMS, you can host it yourself, and then you don't need to pay for Webflow hosting, which is totally true. That being said, as you start to use it a little bit more and try it out in different situations, you realize there is more than meets the eye. Now, that is not necessarily Webflow's fault. They're not gatekeeping anything from you. But when you export their code, you can't use all of the features. So I'm going to go over a few different scenarios that your site may fall under and whether or not you can skip Webflow hosting and host it elsewhere. So let's get into it now. So the first type of site that I want to talk about is a static business site such as this plumber in Toronto. And lots of businesses have sites like this where essentially a website is not a huge part of their success strategy. It's just something that they want to have to show people some of their work, show people maybe their prices, their offerings, and how they can get in touch. And typically with websites like this, they're built and then they are very rarely updated. And if that's the case, then all you really need to do, all of the work is building the site, which means you can export your code, host it elsewhere, and the troubles should be very, very low. Now, with this, you are losing access to the Webflow designer. If you do want to make any updates, then you're either going to need to change the code yourself, or you're going to need to go back into Webflow, make the changes, re-export the code, and re-upload it, which is a hassle. So, my recommendation here is if you slash your clients are very confident that there are going to be minimal edits moving forward, then go ahead, export the code and host it elsewhere. But if you do foresee lots of changes in the future, lots of updates, lots of content, whatever it may be, then I would say keep it in Webflow definitely. So the next kind of site that I want to talk about is dynamic business websites. And is that the correct term? I don't really know, but what that means is a website for your business, such as ours, MemberStack, which has a lot of elements that get changed. It is a large part of our digital strategy. Now, the MemberStack website we use for everything. Yes, we use it to tell people who we are, what we do, and we also use it to post content to get organic visitors. We use it for a lot of things, and it's very important, and we definitely do need to use the Webflow CMS because we use this for a whole bunch of things. We use it to post blogs. We use it to post resources. We use it for a lot. And what we get from Webflow hosting is the ability to very easily upload content, very easily make changes. And for us, it is absolutely crucial that we use the Webflow CMS. So if that's the boat you're in, if your website is a very important part of the success of the business that you're building the website for, then I would say do not think about exporting your site to another place. Now, the next type of site that I want to talk about could also be a dynamic business site. And what I mean by that is if you're building a site that you love to build in Webflow, but you do not want to necessarily keep in Webflow, you want to use another CMS like WordPress, for example, then you can do that using this tool called Nexus by Udesly. It is a really great tool that allows you to use Webflow to build a theme which can go into another CMS. That being said, I have used this before for Shopify and it is really great, but it is not necessarily a few clicks and you're done. When you're building a theme, there are a lot of different things that you need to do in order to make it function like a proper WordPress theme, like a proper Shopify theme. And you need to really keep that in mind while you're building. Otherwise, you'll be exporting a theme which isn't well maintainable. And if you do that, it gets really tricky because when you want to make changes, you'll need to go back into Webflow, export it again, then re-import it, which could break some of the things that you have done in WordPress or in Shopify. So while this is a really great option, do make sure that you do your research and figure out how to go about properly creating a theme because it is not as simple as building a Webflow site, clicking export, and voila. And finally, I want to talk about a perhaps more niche use case, but also a very common one for Webflow developers, and that is Shopify. Now, you may have heard me just a second ago saying that you can use this to build a Shopify theme. 
And yes, that is definitely true. You can do that, but it can get a little bit tricky. And there are a lot of things you need to keep in mind. Your Webflow workflow essentially stops and you're no longer using Webflow from the time that you export it. So if that's gonna be it and that's your theme, then great, go right ahead. But that's probably not the case. E-commerce websites frequently need a lot of testing, a lot of changing, a lot of updates, and this could get a little bit tricky. If you, if you need to export your Shopify theme and move it over frequently, you're gonna break a lot of things and it's not necessarily the most fun situation. That being said, clearly the team at Udesly understands this because they've recently released something that is called Smoothify. And disclaimer, I have not used Smoothify before. That being said, the pain points that I had just discussed about Shopify are covered in this. And essentially what they allow you to do is connect your Webflow, connect your Shopify, keep working in Webflow to make updates and keep using Shopify as your e-commerce provider which is an amazing promise. If it does work like that, and if I was still in my agency days, I would be drooling right now and testing this out like crazy because that is amazing. Um, that is really, really great. That being said, the point of this video is Webflow hosting. And as far as I understand, you would still need to pay for Webflow hosting if you're using Smoothify because you are essentially publishing and launching the site, which is going to be used in combination with Shopify to create your final site. Now, don't uh, quote me on that one because like I said, I haven't used this before, but if that is the case, I would still definitely recommend using something like this. The time that you'll save in development will pay for the Webflow hosting 150 times over. So really cool solution here. I've also heard some other people have created something similar where you can use Shopify with Webflow but I'm not sure. So that is it. If the site that you're building does not fall under one of these categories and you're curious about what you should do, leave a comment below and I will try to get back to you letting you know if I think you do need Webflow hosting or if you don't. Talk to you soon.